Uh, my name is Ray, and uh, my coworker Yudo. We will present this uh, high performance deep learning with Apache Spark. So, a quick background we build a high performance deep learning platform. Uh, we do co design of software and hardware. Um, we are currently working on Connect of a deep learning platform with data pipeline. As we observed, these two type of a, a system, the deep learning system and data pipeline, has very different characteristics. Uh, for the deep learning system, uh, there are uh, computation and communication intensive process. And those, uh, those deep learning process usually demand high ut utilization of GPU to get acceptable performance. And they need very low latency communication because they need to synchronize the parameter server in a very high frequency. So uh, the training also need hardware acceleration to get uh, good performance, like uh, uh, GPU direct RDMA, uh, Numa, Numa Zoom banding, and the Infinity Band. Those, system, those deep learning system usually designed to run a single instance on a system, on a machine, because those, serve, uh, those software uh, usually try to acquire all the computation resources from the machine. Spark data pipeline are optimized for uh, data locality, uh, minimi minimization of the data I.O. and the data shuffling. And those tasks of the data pipeline can be uh, launched multiple instances in a single machine. So th they have a very different uh, characteristic. And these two type of uh, system also use different type of uh, hardware. So in customer uh, data center, they usually have a HPC cluster that is uh, designed for uh, deep learning. Uh, they usually equipped with GPUs, infinity bands, and many other uh, high-end hardwares. But for a data process machine, they, they don't have a GPU, and they usually don't have infinity band, just Ethernet. So the hardware also are different. So our goal is to connect our deep learning platform with uh, data pipelines without sacrificing any performance. From the deep learning system perspective, we also observed if we can offload some pre-processing uh, like data augmentation from the HPC cluster from the training process, we can get around 10% to 20% performance improvement. This is some benchmark on our own uh, deep learning cluster. For the, for the deep learning, we also need to do the data shuffling between each training epochs. And this uh, data shuffling can also be offload from the, super, uh, from the HPC cluster. Because the HPC cluster for training already, the network already overwhelmed by the uh, parameter synchronization. So if we can offload this data shuffling uh, from this HPC server, we can save the bandwidth for training. So our solution, we call it Novo Falls. It's a total connected data pipeline, leveraging the advantages from these two worlds, the Spark and the HPC, the high performance computing. We use Spark for data ingestion, pre-processing, and data shuffling. And the deep learning system we build, we deploy it as a service. And this service is highly optimized file for high performance computing. We have different schedulers. So Spark has its own scheduler, and our uh, deep learning services have its own scheduler. And we build, we build a hardware-aware scheduler. So this scheduler can optimize for new module bending and also understand the topology of the cluster, how many uh, GPUs in each zone, and how those GPUs are connected. And we share the data from data pipeline from the Spark tasks to our 
training services with uh, mem shared memory and using the Apache Arrow format. So it's zero copied. This is our training flow. On the top, we can define the entire flow, uh, the data from data pipe, Spark data pipeline will be served into our training system, and the results data, uh, the, the deep learning model can be saved into the model server. We have two types of uh, scheduler. One is the Spark scheduler, one is the deep learning scheduler. The Spark scheduler will sp schedule the data pipeline tasks, mostly onto the Data, uh, data processing cluster, but only schedule the last stage of the training tasks onto the HPC cluster. So the training data will be brought to the HPC cluster and co-locate with our training services instance, and we can do shared memory there. So at the bottom is a, uh, is an example of the data flow. Spark is used to ingest data from Hadoop, Kafka, and the streaming data sources. And it will do the pre-processing, like data augmentation and data shuffling. And the input data for training are brought to the HPC cluster by Spark and use Apache uh, Arrow format and the shared memory served to our deep learning services. Our deep learning services are launched by our deep learning scheduler, which use uh, NUMA banding and uh, communication uh, topology selection to achieve very high performance. We also have uh, interactive usage for our system. We have built some web GUI to directly manipulate our training services. Uh, we have, uh, the GUI can be used to launch deep learning training and monitor the progress and the resource usage. We also have a Zipline. We can use this as a note, uh, web notebook for user, uh, for the, the interactive user. For the last stage of the task, actually the Spark, uh, Spark task will be scheduled to the HPC cluster and uh, in those cluster, we use sh uh, shared memory and Apache Arrow. Uh, the, the tasks of Spark will write the training data into a circular buffer, and our training process will read data from this circular buffer. So this is our deep learning services architecture. Uh, on the top, uh, we use REST API to support multiple uh, clients, multiple type of clients, uh, includes a web GUI and different type of languages. Uh, we have uh, in the blue box in the middle is the scheduler. It's a Mesos uh, framework and Mesos scheduler. This scheduler understands the topology of the hardware and will scheduling, scheduling the training job according to the hardware uh, topology. And in the worker node, we have our own executor, and we have a dockerized training process. Uh, we do communication using uh, GPU, R RDMA, and uh, other available communication channel. And the input data is from the shared memory and uh, use Apache Arrow format. So this is uh, uh, our hardware over uh, scheduler. So for the data, for data pipeline, we schedule most of the Spark data pipeline onto the data processing cluster and only schedule the last stage of the task onto HPC cluster. This bring the training data onto HPC. And the, our deep learning services uh, will schedule with NUMA zone banding and the communication is also optimized. We can also support uh, inference flow in two different ways. One way is our uh, deep learning uh, inference, mo uh, inference services can be uh, integrated with existing Spark uh, pipe, uh, machine learning pipeline. The other way is very similar to the training, uh, 
the training scenario, we connect this pipeline and uh, with our inference services using shared memory and uh, Apache Arrow. Okay, I will give the to our coworker. Hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Yu Duo. I'm a software engineer at Novomind. Uh, for the second part of the presentation, I'm going to focus a bit more about uh, high-performance deep learning training services. Um, we care a lot about uh, high-performance training speed. So the first thing we look at is the data throughput. For example, how many training samples can we process in one second? And this allows us to uh, very careful implementation of reliable data input pipelines and data augmentations um, and sh sh shuffling, as mentioned earlier. And uh, we also have many frameworks level of optimizations, such as using layer and kernel fusions to avoid unnecessary data movements. And recently, we've added support for half precision or mixed precision. This uses um, floating point 16 instead of uh, standard floating point 32 for both tensor comp computations and uh, tensor communications. This allows us to halve the total memory consumption so we can train larger models. And we also we halve the um, tensor communications so we can fully utilize the uh, bandwidth. So, and, and most importantly, it leverages the latest hardware, such as NVIDIA Volta GPU's tensor cores. Um, our training service is designed for clusters. So we design in a way we're able to uh, scale to multi-GPU and multi-node environments easily. So we adopted a data parallel distributed synchronized stochastic gradient descent approach where here each line stands for a worker, in this case, a GPU. And the GPU first uh, load first uh, a portion of the mini batch and do the forward backward. And then all the GPU will do the all reduce operation. After all the GPU agree on the gradients update, they will each will update the model, copy locally. We have implemented the two state-of-the-art all reduce methods. The first one, we're using the latest uh, uh, NICO library. is NVIDIA Collective Communicator Library. The, uh, the, um, it very optimized for the NVIDIA GPUs, and we chunk the messages to buckets to overlap computation and the communication as much as possible. The second approach we implemented is recursive doubling and recursive hoppling. So we use NCCL for the local reduction and the broadcast, and the CUDA Wear MPI for the uh, cross-machine or reduce operations. So the second approach is um, has fewer communication steps, so it's expected to work better in the bandwidth limited scenarios. Both of the methods we have InfiniBand support, and we support GPU direct RDMA. So, um, as like I mentioned before, our hardware scheduler using Apache Mesos allow us to determine, detect the topologies and do many settings on the fly, such as CPU, GPU affinities, and NUMA binding. And we also can uh, choose or reduce algorithm based on the topology. And importantly, everything I just mentioned is inside Docker containers, which allow us to do easy deployment and simple task scheduling. So uh, we are running in production. This is a picture I got several weeks ago from a colleague in West China. This is a very powerful server for uh, medical images. It has eight nodes and 64 GPUs in total. And each node has eight NVIDIA Volta V100 GPUs. It's a 16 gigabytes device memory, and it's connected via PCIe. It has two infinite band EDRs. So 
it's very high-end server, but it's still much cheaper than the Amulink-based solutions. And the Ansible modules allow us to do easy deployment for the entire system. With that, we're able to achieve near linear uh, scalability on a very popular workload commonly used in the benchmark, uh, VGG16, ResNet50, and uh, Inception V3. It's an image net classification. We're using up to 64 GPUs, and uh, we achieve 90%, about 90% scaling efficiency for both VGG and the Inception V3. And for very challenging VGG, we achieve about 68% scaling efficiency. But ultimately, we're solving a deep learning training problem. So we have to look at the overall time until we reach the convergence. For instance, reach an acceptable um, top one or top five accuracy for the image classification tasks, such as ImageNet. Otherwise, those numbers doesn't mean anything. So the large mid-batch is the key when going distributed. Imagine you have 256 GPUs. If you're still using batch size like 256, then each GPU only got one image to process in one step. It's a waste of a lot of performance because of the, uh, the uh, it wastes a lot of performance and results in very low GPU utilization because lack of data parallelism. Therefore, um, we integrated a variety of different large mini-batch training technology from recent research papers. For example, um, this paper from Facebook, it, uh, we can use linear scaling learning rate to train large batch, and uh, we, with the great gradual learning rate warm-up schema, we are able to reach the same level of accuracy. So in our um, experiment, we also try to more aggressively um, change the learning rate, which result in further reduce in the overall time to convergence. So our benchmark, again, it's a very popular benchmark, ResNet50 on the ImageNet classification. Um, we are able, so the baseline was um, using one or several GPUs on a single machine. This usually takes days, few days, if not weeks, to reach the top one accuracy of 55.3 accuracy. With our system, we are able to scale it to 64 GPUs, and within only um, 52 minutes, we are able to reached the accuracy of 75.8. So as I mentioned earlier, the um, large bass size is very cr critical for the speed up, and also we have this uh, floating point 16 support. Then why not use both of them? We can get further speed up. So we also did some extra experiment, which is uh, large scale mixed position training. So we got uh, 64.1 accuracy in only 50 minutes with mixed position and using only 32 GPUs. So you may notice the accuracy here is a bit lower compared to the uh, standard floating point 62, uh, floating point 32. The reason is the accuracy is because of the weaker data augmentation we're using. Because the um, Tensor core allow us to almost double the training speed and image uh, data throughput, like image per second. While the data augmentation itself does not get any faster, it's still running on the same using a CPU or GPU, it's same as the standard floating point 32. So in this case, we actually observed the, uh, tra tra the bottleneck becoming the data augmentation. So we will, f like uh, Ray mentioned earlier, we will keep um, using the Spark to do the offload data, data augmentation, which potentially can help us improve, improving the accuracy here. So in summary, we are trying to connect it deep learning workflow that optimized for both data processing and uh, high performance deep learning. So offloaded data augmentation and the shuffling 
using Spark and share with training service with zero copy data sharing using Apache Arrow can potentially help us to improve the data throughput and uh, overall time to convergence. Our hardware aware schedule allow us to do many on the fly uh, detection and based on the hardware topology we can choose different uh, or reduce communication algorithm and we can use uh, we can use different support different hardware topology different GPU connections so lastly we have very fast and accurate distributed HPC training service that uh, we are able we are demonstrated using ImageNet classification task and we are able to train ImageNet very quickly and thanks for the attention and if you have any questions we're happy to answer All right, we can now take some questions. If you have one, please come up to the microphone here. Hi, um, thanks for your presentation. Um, I thought I heard you say at the beginning that um, you needed to do shuffles between epochs, is that correct? Or did I mishear you? So sh shuffle, oh, sorry, I, I, I didn't get clear. You needed to shuffle data between epochs? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. That's just used to fight uh, overfitting because that's a common practice for training. It's not spark shuffling. Oh, it's not, uh, it's not spark data shuffling. It's shuffle the order of training data fit into the, the uh, deep learning trainer. So okay, thank you. You need to, yeah. All right, if we have no more questions, let's have one more round of applause for our speakers.